Hello, this is Tandy Banks, Certified Application Engineer for Go Engineer. Today in this quick tip video I want to talk about routing components. SolidWorks Routing is an add-in that allows us to quickly create piping runs, bent tubing, as well as electrical. So today I want to focus in on routing components as they pertain to fabricated pipe runs. If I take a look at one of our default uh, library components from the SolidWorks Routing Library, uh, you can see over here on my right hand side all the different folders and different component types that I can create. I'm going to look at our T uh, today and look at part of what makes up um, its connectivity into the SolidWorks routing tool. Over here on the left hand side if we look at our feature tree we can see that we've got um, some bosses that have been created, a shell operation, and a chamfer. And those are all just geometry. And so at the point when we're done with the geometry, a couple things that we need to set up for the uh, routing component wizard is it, it's helpful if we have a sketch that represents where we want the pipe to be connected to and then also a point or sketch lines that represent where we want this component to be uh, assigned as it's being drug and drop onto our route. Over on the left hand side below you see four features and these are specific to routing. C points stand for connection point and these have the information about what size pipe and what direction the pipe is going to be running through whether it's a fabricated pipe, a tube, or an electrical component. So it sets the component type, so the size of conductor, and you know any additional information like with pipe we need to know what schedule that that might be running. We've got a wizard that I'm going to use in a moment that's going to help us determine um, these connection points as well as a route point. Connection points are where pipe or conductors go. Route points are where this component is going to be hung onto the sketch. Also, you can use configurations within your components. All of the SOLIDWORKS components in our routing library uh, have configurations in them, so we can set multiple sizes and multiple schedules. You know, if we take a look at a uh, one inch schedule 40, we can see its size up to a 10 inch schedule 80. We've even got some mod ball sizes in here as well as like a schedule 140 8 inch. So I'm going to flip over to a custom made component. And these can be downloaded from a, uh, a library or from a vendor, or you can model these uh, up yourself. So I've got a sketch in here that represents where I want the pipe to start and stop. So I've got an endpoint here as well as a, a midpoint here that's going to be my route point. I've also drawn in a line here of what I want represented as vertical. You're not required to rename these, these sketches, but uh, once you get used to building library components, you'll see that creating a vertical sketch is, is helpful. You'll see that this is uh, a socket weld type configuration for this particular component, and I'm representing just a, a very basic check valve today. First thing I want to do is make sure that my routing add-in is turned on, so I can look at my add-ins and make sure that the SOLIDWORKS routing tool is turned on. Whenever I do that I have a routing menu up at the top bar and inside there we have routing tools and a routing library manager. Give that just a second to fire up. Our library manager is not only the place where we create new components but it's also where we specify the file locations that the SOLIDWORKS routing add-in is going to use for our library and our interaction within our system. You can see we have multiple tabs here including routing file locations, making sure that we have all those set in the proper location. But today we're going to focus in on the routing component wizard. First thing we need to do is specify whether this is electrical piping or tubing. We're going to specify a tu uh, piping component today. And then depending on which selection you make you'll have some additional selections. Obviously, we wouldn't have things like a reducing cross in electrical. It's going to have things more like connectors. So if we look at our valves area, you can see we've got multiple valve types that we can specify. And if yours don't fit in one of these categories, you can just specify a generic valve. But today I am specifying a check valve. So I want to choose that, click on the next button. And it's going to determine, based on uh, what type of component it is, all of the required geometry. And it tells me in order to have a check valve, I have to have at least two connection points and I have to have one route point. 
And so you can see the nature of a wizard here. I can click on the add button and it's going to ask me to specify my connection point. So I'll come out here and I can select a point. I can select a circular edge or I can select a circular face to determine where that that's going to start and stop. First one I'm going to choose is to be a point and a face that's going to be perpendicular to the direction that I want that to go. You can see it places a little axis and an arrowhead showing me the direction that that's going to go. I have the ability to reverse that direction if needed. I choose the, the type of component that I'm specifying, which fabricated pipe is correct. It's already predetermined here. And then I need to determine what size of pipe is going to connect into this. Now this happens to be a two inch check valve, so having that uh, set to a four inch just won't work. So whenever I click on uh, choose pipe size, I can come down here and specify which of those pipe sizes that I want to use. I want to determine that this is going to be a two inch schedule 40, and I can click on my green check mark, and it builds the connection point information for me. It'll return me to the wizard, and you can see I've got one green C point here. Our legend down here at the bottom tells me that this is required and that it's present. I can choose to add a second connection point. This time I'm going to grab my backside, select the face, determines the arrow direction. It remembered that I'm using that same two inch pipe. If I want to just double check, it can say select pipe, choose OK there, green check mark to accept that one. So I have two C points that are present. I can add more if needed, but for our check valve, this is all that's required. And then I want to choose add my route point. Specify the point. Again, the route points are important because this is where the component is going to be dropped in or how it's going to be oriented whenever we uh, put this into our route. Green check mark there will uh, create the route point for us. And if you notice over here on the left hand side in my feature tree, it's building those features for me as we go. C point configuration down here at the bottom. This is about how this component is going to be used when we drop it into our route. By default, add all C points is going to put a pipe stub at each connection pointing away from our part. We can choose to not create pipe stubs whenever we drop this on, or we can choose the select C points. The connection points are always available to us in our routing component while we're using the routing add-in. At any time you can right click on a connection point and add a pipe stub. So whichever choice that you make here, it's always reversible. You can always move forward in the routing tool even if you choose not to uh, add pipe stubs by default to your C points. We'll go ahead and click the next button. And it recognized that I had a sketch in my part called vertical. I created this sketch with a single construction line allowing me to specify as, as the uh, picture denotes over here what my vertical direction for my valve would be. If you were using a globe or a gate valve this might be the stem. In this case I'm using kind of a flapper style uh, check valve and so this allows us to be able to set rotation by default in the model. And you'll notice our wizard recognized that I had vertical but as it tells me here that the um, the functionality is case sensitive and so do I want to rename this using a capital V? Yes, I would like that. Okay, so it's changed that for me if you notice over here on the left hand side. It also picked up that I could, um, it's using that as my axis. I'm going to delete this for just a moment and I want to show you that if I were to create this in a different way. If I need to be able to come in here and add a vertical axis it says do you want to use an existing one or do you want to create a new one so if I choose to create a new one it'll move me back into my model allowing me to be able to specify an axis this is our axis feature tool within SolidWorks I can select a cylindrical face and it will place an axis at the center of that cylindrical face click on the green check mark it named that axis vertical now it has the information that it wants. So whether you use a sketch and predetermine that or whether you create that uh, during the uh, routing component wizard, it's completely up to you. Go to the next wizard here. It's telling me that the model is, is complete. We're ready to move forward. 
So it's just doing a validity check for me there. Now I can come in and start creating additional file properties and information that's needed. Okay, I'm going to leave those alone for the moment and just go ahead and move forward. And it says, where do you want to save this? Under what name? In what folder? And so I might want to go over here and tell it to go ahead and come on down a little further into my routing library and place this in my valves folder. So now it's going to place that component in my valves folder. I click on the finish button. Now it's letting me know that the save has been completed and we're ready to move forward. Ready for my next component. My name is Tandy Banks. This has been a quick tip video regarding routing components. Thank you.